Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ting, and I'm a PhD student from Bob and Ezian's team. I'm honored to attend this meeting and give a brief introduction about my research progress. My topic is microwave remote sensing for soil, for soil moisture estimation and vegetation characterization with physics-informed machine learning. I will jump to this part. Uh, my study area mainly focuses in match set, where we have multiple years for microwave soil moisture, soil, tem soil temperature, and meteorological observations. And my study method can be conducted in following steps. First, I uh, develop an emulator to simulate the backscattering coefficient at C band and brightness temperature at L band using machine learning algorithms. And second, to estimate soil moisture and vegetation parameters using multi target machine learning algorithms. And the last is to evaluate the model performance using in situ observations and intercompare with some other soil moisture products and uh, vegetation parameter products. Luckily, I've got some preliminary results. Uh, random forest was my first uh, candidate for the machine learning algorithms. And I have four years in situ observation data available. Uh, so to choose the best model, I conduct a cross-validation procedure. I use three years data. Uh, I use three years data as my model training and the left year for the model testing. First, let's have a look at the brightness temperature simulation result. The left table is all the predictors I use in the model. Uh, the selection for all, the, all these predictors took a thorough consideration about the physics principles of scattering mechanisms. And the left, uh, the right table shows the evaluation metrics at horizontal and the vertical polarizations. We can see that the horizontal polarizations have better performance. The R value can reach 0 0.93. Here is the time series for the year 2017 and 2018. The green line is the institute observation, and the red line is the model prediction. We can see that the prediction can capture the average trend for the whole year. However, for the results are smoother and can't catch up all the big fluctuations in the signals. <coughs> Here, uh, let's have a look at the soil moisture ed estimation result. Uh, I estimate the soil moisture at 2.5 meters and uh, 5 meters. The antecedent precip precipitation index was used. This index can uh, reflect the accumulate influence of precipitation during time, so it's suitable for the soil moisture estimation. And we can see the result. Uh, the 2017 has the best result. Can, uh, the R value can reach 0 0.86. Here is the time series for the soil moisture estimation. We can see the upper picture. Also, the red line is the prediction, and the green line is the institute observation. For this period, uh, this may be some, uh, hard to recognize, is the winter period. It, we can define it as a freezing period. For this period, the soil moisture variation can be well captured. However, for this part, it's in August and September. The soil moisture overestimation may be caused by the water intercepted by the vegetation. Also, the leaf area index, uh, I try to estimate that to test the, the capability for vegetation parameters estimation. And the temperature sum and uh, uh, polarization index are used to better char characterize the vegetation. Also, the data was averaged on a ba weekly basis because the leaf, leaf area index uh, doesn't change too much during time. 
uh, we can see this is the time series for the leaf fairy index. The whole, the total trend can be captured except for the uh, top value. Uh, here is some early conclusions about my experiment. The random forest algorithms can provide good prediction of the total trend for the target features, but there are still some anomalies uh, can't be explained well, which may be caused by vegetation and some weather uh, influence. So in the future, I will test some new predictors in my model, try to solve these problems. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much, Tink, uh, for a nice presentation, also uh, timely. Um, any, any questions? Yes? Martin. Hi. Uh, thanks for the interesting presentation. Um, in the title, you say that it's uh, like physics-based, physics, like uh, so. How? Yeah, physics, physics informed. Physics informed. So these are, but you used a random forest, uh, uh, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't clear if it was only the features, also like some part of the method that you used. Oh, but, uh, uh, the concept for physics informed is about I want to develop an emulator. This emulator is emulate a physical physic model to use the physic principles. And the random forest is the tool I used to build this emulator. So the input features I choose is based on the physical consideration of, about the whole mechanisms for the, uh, for example, the signal, the microwave signal. Yeah. Hmm, okay, fair enough, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Is this something like, was the physical explanation for the importance of uh, distance to, to coast in Europe? Yeah, yeah, be, be, yeah, before you put the conclusions, actually, my, uh, I was going to ask the question, it looks like because the extremes has a peri peri periodical um, um, situation, so it looks like something is missing in your model, that's why you are not capturing, but in fact, that's your conclusion also. Yeah. Um, we hope you can find that parameter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it will help. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for your presentation.